Well, it's great to be with you again. Let's go ahead and get organized as we have a lot to accomplish today, as usual. For materials, have on hand these activities for one, that's going to be part of your assignment, and for two, that's the outline that you'll be filling in um, as much as you can during the lesson. On our agenda today, we're going to start with a review of what we covered in our previous lesson. We'll be focusing today on metals, nonmetals, and fossil fuels. And again, we have some map work and some statistical highlights that we'll tack on at the end if we have time. Then our main idea today, mankind mines three basic types of resources, metals, nonmetal minerals, and fossil fuels. So that's what we're focusing on today, mining. Your goals for today, identify examples of precious metals, common metals, and non-metal minerals. Define alloy. Distinguish the three types of fossil fuels. Identify the most important metal mined today and the main alloy. Okay, let's go ahead and start today with our chapter verse verses, Genesis 1, 27 through 28. Go ahead and read these with me. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now we do want to take a moment or two to review what we talked about previously in our lesson on primary industries and agriculture. And uh, what you need to do is choose all of the answers that apply to the phrase. Dominion mandate. Man's order to serve creation. Man's responsibility to preserve biodiversity. Man's task to subdue the earth. The dominion mandate is C, man's task to subdue the earth. Industry, daily work, diligence, or manufacturing. It is all, industry can refer to all three of those and even more than that. Primary industry, agriculture, manufacturing, services. Okay, agriculture is the only primary industry listed there. Agriculture, subsistence farming, ranching, animal husbandry. Okay, all of those are facets of agri agriculture. Uh, animal husbandry is one branch. Ranching is a division of animal hus husbandry. And subsistence farming is a division of farming. Cash crop. Nomadic herding. Commercial farming. Or subsistence hu husbandry. Okay, for cash crop, that is commercial farming. They grow the crops to sell for cash rather than to feed their own families. And that ends our little review now. Farming and herding are done all over the world, but there are primary industries other than agriculture. That's what we focused on in our previous lesson. But we want to remember that a primary industry is a basic industry that takes materials from the earth uh, that people need for food, clothes, or shelter, okay? So the primary industries that we're looking at are agriculture, which we covered previously, fishing, forestry, and mining, which is what we're going to be looking at today. Now, fishing, forestry, and mining extract natural resources from the earth. And by natural resources, we're referring to useful substances that can be found in the earth. And I had a student one year that gave it a really simple de definition. Anything, it's not man-made. A natural resource is not man-made. So if it's man-made, you know it's disqualified. 
things like animals, plants, or minerals. Animals would go along with fishing, plants would go along with forestry, and minerals are going to go with mining. You can see the word mine right in there. And uh, those are three common categories. Sometimes they're referred to as animal, vegetable, mineral, because they all end the same way when you play the game. I think there's 20 questions or something like that, and you ask, is it animal, mineral, or vegetable? And then you keep asking questions trying to guess. So, you need to be aware of fishing and forestry because fishing um, is an important resource in many countries and forestry uh, still provides lumber for building homes and furniture and also for paper. I did mention earlier that the SIC doesn't include fishing and forestry in their groups. Um, on your chart you'll see, I think it is that Forestry is, is pretty close to another, the percentage of workers is pretty close to another one, but they're not as important as mining has become. So we're going to spend the remaining portion of our time on mining. It is the most important industry of the three to most modern countries. So you'll want to read about fishing and forestry in your textbook, but we're going to spend the rest of our time um, on mining. And there are three basic resources that men mine. You should have noticed this in our advanced organizer. Um, metals, nonmetals, and fossil fuels. Metals, nonmetals, nonmetal minerals, and fossil fuels. Now, metals and nonmetals can both fall under the category of minerals. So you might ask yourself, what exactly is a mineral? Well, for our uses, we're using a simplified definition. Minerals are solid crystals. They occur, occur naturally in the earth, and they have a definite chemical composition. That's our basic definition there, which is not very specific. But there have been around 3,000 minerals identified, amazingly, and there are about 100 common minerals. And I was uh, checking on this just before the lesson and I went to a site on minerals and they had a definition, you know, really long definition and they said there were over 3,000 and there are new ones being discovered all the time. Most of them aren't as common because they don't really have, uh, they haven't really discovered any uses for them. They're not especially pretty and so, you know, people aren't really interested in them. But I do have a mineral collection with me here. These are sometimes mistakenly referred to as rock collections. I've found that's an insult to people who collect minerals, so we don't want to call them rocks. But uh, they are glued in, just to make sure I didn't steal any of them. A few of them are loose. This is a flint, flintstone, amethyst, uh, crystal barrel, petrified wood. Some of them are loose. Iron pyolite, that looks almost like fool's gold. It might be the same thing, I'm not sure. I'm not real familiar with a lot of the minerals. This one's loose. Crystal barrel, you can see that one's got a nice, that one's been polished. So some minerals are collected for their beauty and not just their usefulness. Here's quartzite, uh, nephilite. Here's another type of quartz, rose quartz. That's another polished one that's pretty. And we have some big, I think this one is sandstone. Yeah, you can see it just crumbles right off of there. Sandstone. This is a type of iron, amethyst iron oxide. And uh, soapstone. This is one that people sometimes will use to carve uh, images into. My parents brought back a piece from Alaska. I think it was my dad. I think it was him. Probably my, our neighbors also went to Alaska, where they've carved an Eskimo man, lady, and a wolf. Really pretty in... Uh, in soapstone. So the minerals are different. There are different qualities. They're uh, classified by hardness and color and, you know, other, there are other uh, technical things that they check on these different minerals to, dis to um, distinguish them and to classify them. But uh, metals are the most important and they are distinguished from other minerals by four particular qualities. And I didn't show any metals there, but I'm sure you're familiar with most of them anyway. The qualities that distinguish metals from other minerals are that they are shiny, they are malleable. This means they can be hammered into sheets. They are ductile, which means they can be drawn into wires, and they are conductive, 
which means they can conduct electricity. And that's why um, metals are sought after more than other minerals. Some metals, though, are sought after even more highly than other metals, and they have earned the distinction of precious metals. And they're sought not necessarily for their usefulness, but for their beauty, their durability, their scarcity, and their value for trade. You probably know them already, but silver is a fine example. Beautiful, shiny, uh, scarce. Was often used for coins, not as much anymore. Gold is another example. Also uh, used in money because of its value, but also often used for jewelry and um, ornaments. Uh, people gild plates and things with gold. They use it for decoration. They wear it on their jewelry. It's kind of a symbol of wealth as well. And platinum is the last one on our list, and it's so rare we couldn't even get a picture of it. But platinum has become really popular lately for jewelry. It looks uh, kind of like a silver. This is actually, my ring here is actually a white gold, which looks silverish, but platinum looks just about like this when it's used in the jewelry. But these metals are, um, in many cultures, symbols of wealth are used for jewelry. And other minerals used in this way are known as precious gems, and we're going to discuss them later when we get to non-metal minerals. So we have precious metals and gems, we'll come to you later, which are much sought after, but we also have common metals, which while they're not um, rare, they are extremely useful. Common metals are called such because they are mined in great quantities. They're, it's not unusual to find them. And some examples are copper, lead, which also was unavailable for photography, and iron are some of the main ones. Iron is very important as the most important mineral mined today. It's in great use. Um, aluminum is another, it's the second most common metal on earth, and it comes from bauxite ore. And people have known about it for a long time, but it's so hard to separate from the ore. It wasn't commonly used for many, many years until I think it was in the 1800s someone found an easier way to separate it. But we want to take a moment to look at the map of world mines in your textbook and um, answer a few questions so you can get, you, get familiar with this map and know how to use it. You do want to turn to it yourself, though, because you won't be able to see enough detail on my map, as always. But um, this can be found on pages 64 and 65. And I'm going to save the Let's Go Exploring for later. Maybe you can do on your own. Maybe if we have time, we'll come back to it. But I have a few other questions for you. Start with this one. Find the region of South Africa that produces the most gold in the world. Okay, hopefully that's not too difficult for you because you know where South Africa is. There's only one gold bar. If you looked at your key here, this is very important. Gold is just a little gold bar. And it's what's water strand. That is the area of South Africa that produces the most gold. Okay, what types of metals are mined near Broken Hill and Mount Isa? So as you're scanning, 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 I'll give you a hint. Both of those are in Australia. Okay, uh, Broken Hill right here, and you have to use your key. You can see there's lead, silver, and zinc. Mount Isa is directly above. The exact same combination, lead, silver, and zinc in Australia right here. You can see that more clearly on your own map in your own textbook. Okay, name the two famous bauxite mines in Australia. Okay, again, uh, if you look at your key, you see that bauxite is actually aluminum ore. I probably should have taken a moment to look at the key with you. Um, gold, silver, platinum is a little bit greenish and it's turned a different direction. 
iron, aluminum ore or bauxite, chromium, copper, mag uh, manganese, zinc, lead, nickel, and coal and petroleum. These are some of the most uh, popular items mined in the world today. That's why those were chosen for our map. Now over here to Australia, I figure since we're looking at it again, I'll just get nice and close. Here is our aluminum ore symbol. That's at WIPA, Australia, up here in Queensland, and then Darling Range over here in Australia. Okay, and one more just to kind of get us accustomed to using our map here. What important metal ore is mined in the island of Jamaica? And again, we see that it is aluminum ore or bauxite. Here's Jamaica, and here is our symbol. Okay, now I uh, skipped over some of the more difficult questions, but I just wanted you to get accustomed to the symbols and kind of looking at the map and how to use it. And we might come back and work some of the other ones together if we have time later. Now, for centuries, man has used copper, lead, and iron, but early man also knew that he could combine metals. Generally, um, copper, lead, and iron, and aluminum are the important ones. They're combined with the other six that are shown on this chart here. This is on page 66. If you just turn the page, you'll see this chart. And here we have the common metals, iron ore, alumi aluminum, copper, and lead are the ones, they're, are, they're combined with these other minerals here, chromium, uh, manganese, zinc, nickel, tin, and tungsten. Now, uh, combining the metals forms an alloy. An alloy is a mixture of two or more metals. And copper was used for the first important alloys. Today, the most important one used is iron, and it is used to make steel. Steel is an alloy, which is a mixture of iron and carbon. It's the world's most important alloy today. In 1856, a man uh, discussed in your textbook found an easier and more reliable process of making steel, and that's when it really took off. Some people say that we're in the steel age today. Um, and steel is known for its strength. It's very strong. Two steel alloys that you probably have around your house are um, uh, stainless steel, if you add chromium or nickel to steel, it creates stainless steel. And people use it for pots and pans and kitchen surfaces, sinks, and just about everything. Silverware, most silverware today is made of stainless steel. Tungsten mixed with steel provides another type of hard steel that people use for knife blades or even swords. Probably the, not most of us have swords around our homes, but we do have knives for cutting and chopping. Now, besides metals, so far we've just been discussing metals. Man mines many useful non-metal minerals. And um, on our chart here, we have precious metals, common metals. We have minerals here, uh, phosphates, nitrates, potash, sulfur, uranium are some of the non-metal minerals that are mined. Uh, I have another list here that lists, it, some of them overlap, but these are some common minerals that are in, in use today. Limestone is very common in different combinations. Uh, for example, it is the main, one of the main ingredients in cement. If limestone is uh, mixed with clay, it makes cement. Here's clay here, one of the, min one of the other non-metal minerals. Um, if you add sand to that mixture, then you have mortar. If you add crushed rock to limestone and clay, then that's going to make cement. I'm sorry, uh, adding crushed rock makes concrete, which is used for most of the world's buildings today. Um, granite and slate, uh, marble, sandstone, those are often used to carve. And here you see a carving. This looks like it's in slate, possibly, or could be sandstone. That's very similar to the to the look of the of the sandstone that my parents brought home. It had that grayish look to it. It's hard to tell just from the picture. Those are used to, for decorations and carvings. Salt, you know, is used as a preservative. Uh, sulfur is used in the making of gunpowder, uh, matches, fertilizer. Marble is also used for statues, ornaments, um, window sills, things like that. Flooring, people use it to put on their floors. 
Uh, graphite is used for the lead in pencils. This pencil I have right here, graphite. Uh, another use of limestone, they, they add uh, sand and soda ash to it, heat it, and you know what that makes? I remember being amazed when I first learned this. It makes glass. I, saw, I was watching some, you know, something with a superhero, and he took this sand and rubbed it really hard for a long time, and when he held it up, it was a piece of glass. So it wasn't totally, totally realistic, but I was like, that was the first time I knew that sand was used for making glass, and I just found that pretty amazing. I've always remembered it. But anyway, those are some of the other non-metal minerals that are mined for different purposes, some just for the looks of them and others for more practical, more useful purposes. Um, as I mentioned before, some of the uh, minerals like sulfur are used as fertilizers, and this is a very important use. Fertilizers are minerals added to the soil to help produce crops. And the most important ones are phosphates, which contain phosphorus, nitrates, which contain nitrogen, and potash, which is the source for potassium. Also, as mentioned earlier, some precious gems are minerals mined for their value. And precious gems are used similar to the way precious metals are for adornment. Uh, they're symbols of wealth. And there are two categories, inorganic, are actually minerals, which is what we're talking about. Um, some examples are turquoise. The Western United States is very well known for that uh, turquoise that's used in a lot of jewelry. Um, jade is another example. It's from the mineral jadeite, and China is very well known for, for jade. Here's an example of a piece. This one um, hasn't been carved. It's still in the rough, but it's often carved into little statues or things. Um, opals. Australia is very famous for the opals that are mined there. You can see they have a, a variety of color. Rubies um, and sapphires are both mined in Burma. They're mined other places, but these are places that are really well known. Uh, another interesting fact about sapphires that I learned as I was studying is that sapphires actually come in all different colors. And a sapphire and a ruby are exactly the same except for the color. A ruby is actually a red sapphire, but they have yellow sapphires and pink ones and all different colors. But when you use just the word sapphire by itself, it just refers to the blue sapphire. Um, diamonds, we want to talk about diamonds, of course. South Africa is famous for mining diamonds. They weren't even discovered until 1867. All those years, what did people wear when they got engaged? I don't know. But of all the gemstones, diamonds are the most useful and the most highly prized. They aren't necessarily the most valuable. I believe that some rubies are actually even more valuable if they, if they are big enough and clear enough. But diamonds are made of pure carbon, and that crystal structure makes them the hardest natural substance on earth and nothing but another diamond can scratch the surface of a diamond. You probably have known that for a long time but for that reason diamonds aren't just pretty jewels that people wear on their fingers when they're getting married but they have hundreds of uses in industry. They use them for uh, the cutting edges on delicate medical instruments, or they use them on drill bits for oil rigs. So they can drill right through the stone because nothing can scratch them. Uh, they even use the dust after they've cut the diamond to make it really uh, sparkle to put in a setting for jewelry. They use the dust to put on um, grinding pads uh, so that they can use them on grinding wheels. They're so durable. and. Um, that, that is why diamonds are valuable in more ways than one. They're not just for looks, but they're also very useful. Uh, there are also some precious gems that are not minerals. Um, that is, they are organic in their nature. Organic. They come from products from plants and animals. Um, probably the first thing that would come to mind would be a pearl. It is considered a precious gem, but it's not a mineral because it's organic. It's formed from an oyster, right? And um, pearls are also used in the same ways as other precious gems for adornment, symbols of wealth. Um, amber is another one that's sometimes cut into a jewel. It's actually the petrified, it's petrified tree rosin, um, or resin, excuse me. Ivory comes from the tusks of elephants. And um, coral comes from the little sea creatures 
Jet is another one. It's fossilized driftwood. And so there are some jewels like that that are not actually known as, they're not actually minerals, but they are precious jewels. Okay? So men mine metals, nonmetals, and um, fossil fuels. That was our third uh, category of things that men mine for use. Fossil fuels are organic matter, and that's just remains of living things. And they're very important because they're used as a source of energy. They come in three states, solid, liquid, and gas. Um, coal is an example of a solid fossil fuel. Coal. Petroleum would be liquid, right? Liquid. And natural gas. That was pretty obvious. That's gas. And... Um, petroleum is very important. It's the most important mining product of the world. However, coal is actually used to produce most of the energy for the world today. So uh, it's kind of an interesting irony. Um, we do want to take just a moment to look at the main products of the world's mines, which include fossil fuels. This is our same little chart that we've been looking at. But you'll see at the bottom, there's a category, I'm going to try to get a little closer this time, for fossil fuels, coal, petroleum, and natural gas. Petroleum is probably the most important. Coal, however, you can see more of that is mined, is used for most of the world's energy. Let's use this chart to answer a few questions. How often does the U.S. appear on the list? Russia and China, how often do they appear? Do a little bit of comparison. Okay, the United States actually appears on the list nine times. That means they're um, a primary, one of the two top primary producers of these different products, nine and nine of these different products. Russia is on the list six times and China is on the list five times. Now this one takes a little more time. Add up the percentages of the two leading producers of each metal. How many metals are produced primarily by just two countries? That means if the combined production is 50% or greater. And you'll need to pause the program. Okay, if you did just the metals, as the question was worded, platinum, 92% is mined by just two companies, I mean countries, aluminum, 52% by just two, uh, chromium, 65% of that is controlled by just two countries, and tungsten, 75% of that by just two countries. Now let's answer one last question quickly. Which fossil fuel does the United States appear to need from foreign sources? Okay, if we look at our list right here, we can see that that is petroleum. The United States has 20% of the coal, 24% of the natural gas. It's not in the top two for petroleum, so that's very important to us today. Also notice iron ore is produced in great quantity compared to these other common minerals. Okay, so that's another important um, question I was going to ask about, but didn't don't have time to ask you about it. I just wanted to point it out to you to keep in mind the importance of iron. Now let's go ahead then and take a look at your assignment today. Read pages 64 through 69, section review page 70, and activity 41 number 2. Where in the world what country is the largest Spanish-speaking country? Mexico. Next time, see if you can find the answer to this one. Where can you get your, I'm sorry, where can you get reindeer sausage on your pizza? I don't know why you'd want to, but <laughs> somewhere in the world you can get it.